Today is Thursday, January 7th. What to know about the invasion of the U.S. Capitol that forced lawmakers to take cover and evacuate. And we have the latest fallout from arrests to new White House resignations. We'll also update you on the actual process to finalize the presidential election results. Plus, who won that second Georgia runoff race and what it means for Congress? Amazon pledges billions of dollars to one cause, we'll explain. And a few things to know about a trickier tax season. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. For the first time in more than 200 years, the U.S. Capitol building was invaded and overrun. There's a lot we'll get to about what happened and the fallout, but it all started with what was supposed to be a peaceful rally. Pro-Trump protesters were getting together just as Congress was meeting to certify and finalize President-elect Joe Biden's victory. Around noon, President Trump spoke to the crowds and told them to walk down to the Capitol. And he said, quote, you will never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength. Shortly after that speech, his supporters broke into the U.S. Capitol. The mob busted through the Capitol doors and windows, forcing their way past police officers inside. Lawmakers crouched under desks and put on gas masks as police tried unsuccessfully to barricade the building. Eventually, all members of Congress were safely evacuated. But rioters made it onto the floor of the House and Senate and also vandalized Democratic lawmakers' offices. At least three suspected pipe bombs were found and removed yesterday. Also, a woman was shot inside the Capitol building and later died. The AP reports she was in the crowd that was breaking down the doors and officials believe someone in law enforcement shot her in the chest. And police say three other people died after suffering medical emergencies near the Capitol. Several Capitol Police officers were also hurt throughout the day. In the end, D.C. police arrested dozens of people for various reasons, like assault and weapons charges. NPR reports thousands more were allowed to go home. But the FBI is now asking people to identify those who incited violence yesterday, so more charges could eventually be filed. Now, the National Guard is out in force, and Washington, D.C. is under a curfew until at least 6 a.m. While the riots were happening, the nation heard mixed messages from our current, past, and future leaders. First, President-elect Joe Biden. He said in his speech, quote, This is not dissent, it's disorder. It's chaos. It borders on sedition, and it must end now. He called on President Trump to step up and help end the siege. Minutes later, President Trump posted a recorded video on Twitter and other social media. In it, Trump told the protesters and rioters to go home and to be peaceful, but also that, quote, We love you. You're very special. And again, he spoke about the election being rigged and stolen from him. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram have since removed that video, saying it could contribute to further violence. They also temporarily locked the president out of his accounts. Meanwhile, all four living former presidents condemned the riots. Despite the interruption and chaos, lawmakers decided to come back to the Capitol last night to continue the process of certifying electoral votes, after the building was given the all-clear, of course. As Vice President Mike Pence put it, quote, to those who wreaked havoc, you did not win. Well, it took until nearly four o'clock in the morning, D.C. time. But when all was said and done, Joe Biden was certified as the next president of the United States. That was the final step ahead of Inauguration Day on January 20th. But it wasn't an easy process. To remind you again, this is typically a fairly quick procedural meeting to count electoral votes. But this time, things were tense in the Capitol even before rioters showed up. Dozens of Republicans in Congress had already objected to the results in certain swing states, some calling for an audit before finalizing votes. But others accused those lawmakers of putting their own political interests ahead of democracy. Republicans were, and continue to be, split on this issue. Although some lawmakers chose to change their minds about objecting after the chaos at the Capitol. Either way, it's over now. The final tally ended up being 306 electoral votes for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, 232 for Donald Trump and Mike Pence. Minutes after that count was finalized, a White House advisor tweeted out a statement from President Trump. It said, quote, even though I totally disagree with the outcome of the election and the facts bear me out, nevertheless, there will be an orderly transition on January 20th. In the wake of the Capitol riots, a handful of White House staffers decided to call it quits a couple weeks early. For example, Trump's deputy national security advisor, Matt Pottinger, resigned effective immediately. As Bloomberg reports, he was dismayed by the riot and President Trump's role in inciting violence. Also, First Lady Melania Trump's chief of staff, Stephanie Grisham, stepped down, and so did the White House social secretary. All three are some of the longest-serving members of the Trump administration. 
White House press aide Sarah Matthews also quit yesterday, saying in a statement, quote, I was deeply disturbed by what I saw today. CNBC reports even more officials are considering resigning over the riots at the Capitol, including National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien. But so far, no official comments from him or the White House. To be continued. It wasn't just Washington, D.C. impacted. State Capitol buildings all over the country had to go into lockdown in response to threatening protests. For example, in Olympia, Washington, a large group of Trump supporters got onto the grounds of the governor's mansion. Police had to escort Georgia's secretary of state to safety as well after militia members gathered outside the Capitol building in Atlanta. And fistfights broke out between protesters outside California's Capitol in Sacramento. But there were peaceful protests at state capitals elsewhere, like Phoenix, Arizona, Denver, Colorado, and Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Okay, more news still ahead, but first, this episode is brought to you by Noom. Look, I'm not a fan of fad diets or get fit fast trends that just aren't very realistic. Well, Noom does not like that stuff either. Instead, Noom says it's based in psychology and wants to give you more knowledge so you can accomplish your personal health goals and stick with them in the long term. And Noom is clear that it's not just about losing weight. It's about a lifestyle and being able to replace your habits with healthier habits. In fact, more than 80% of Noomers finish the program and more than 60% have stuck with their goals for at least one year. Noom is forgiving too because they know we're all human. If you go off track a day, no worries. You can get back on track the next day. So if you want to try it out, you can sign up for your trial today at Noom, N-O-O-M, Noom.com slash Newsworthy. Noom wants you to know there's a science to getting healthier. So again, sign up for your trial at Noom, N-O-O-M, Noom.com slash Newsworthy. If you want to learn how to live healthier, check out Noom at N-O-O-M dot com slash Newsworthy. Now back to the news. Democrats will take control of the U.S. Senate for the first time in six years. Media outlets like the AP confirmed that John Ossoff defeated the incumbent Republican Senator David Perdue in that Georgia runoff election. Ossoff is the first Jewish person Georgia has ever sent to the Senate. And at 33 years old, he'll also be the youngest U.S. senator since Joe Biden in 1973. And of course, Ossoff takes the final seat that was up for grabs in the Senate. Remember, the Reverend Raphael Warnock was already projected to beat the other incumbent Republican Senator, Kelly Loeffler. So far, neither Republican in these runoffs has conceded defeat. But Ossoff and Warnock have both given victory speeches and both lead by margins that would not require recounts. So it seems the Senate will be split down the middle, 50 Democrats and 50 Republicans. Democrats technically take the lead when President-elect Joe Biden takes office on January 20th, since Vice President-elect Kamala Harris serves as the tiebreaker. This will likely help Democrats fill the Biden cabinet by approving nominations quickly. But with such a thin margin, Democrats will still need to rely on at least some Republican votes on most major bills. Reports say President-elect Joe Biden will choose Merrick Garland to be his attorney general. If that name sounds familiar, it's because Garland was nominated by former President Barack Obama to serve on the U.S. Supreme Court. However, at the time, Republican senators blocked his nomination. This time around, though, The New York Times says he has Republican support. For example, Senators Lindsey Graham, Mitch McConnell and more have said they would support him to run a national agency, citing his integrity and independence. Garland is currently a judge on a federal appeals court. He's also a veteran of the Justice Department, most known for prosecuting the Oklahoma City bomber and the so-called Unabomber. However, there might be some objections as well. The Times says civil rights groups have been pressuring the president-elect to fill this cabinet position with a diverse nominee. Well, Garland is a white man who does have a record of favoring law enforcement over people accused of crimes. We'll see how it shakes out when it's time for a Senate confirmation hearing. Stay tuned. The Dow Jones closed at a new all-time high yesterday, which caught some people by surprise, especially since there was so much turmoil and uncertainty in Washington, D.C. The index surged more than 400 points to close with a 1.4 percent gain. Still, the Dow seesawed throughout the trading day. And while the Capitol riot likely played a role, experts say the markets were also influenced by the two runoff races in Georgia. Some investors were worried that Democratic control in the Senate would help usher in tax increases and regulatory changes. But at the same time, it could lead to more COVID-19 economic relief. Either way, the markets managed to hum along. 
Amazon is investing $2 billion in affordable housing. The online retailer says it'll spend the money over the next five years. It wants to build tens of thousands of housing units in some big Amazon employment hubs. That's the Puget Sound area of Washington, which includes Seattle, as well as Arlington, Virginia, and Nashville, Tennessee. The company also plans to use part of the money to preserve existing housing in those areas as well. As The Verge puts it, the unspoken reality of pledges like these is that tech companies play a major role in gentrification and a lack of affordable housing in the local communities where they hire thousands of people. It's at least in part because of the high wages and unmatched benefits that they provide. And Amazon is not the first tech giant to invest in affordable housing. Apple, Facebook, Google, and Microsoft previously vowed to do something similar in areas like San Francisco and Seattle. And that's it for the main news today, but now it's time for Thing to Know Thursday. And today we're talking about why preparing your 2020 taxes may be trickier this time. But first, thanks to our sponsor, Rothy's. Make your mark in the new year with chic, comfortable, washable, and sustainable shoes and bags from Rothy's. Rothy's is always up to date with what's in style, and they come in a constantly changing variety of colors, prints, and patterns. For me, it's great to buy shoes and bags that I know are fashionable now and will last longer than just one year in both style and quality. I still love and wear the Rothy's flats I got last winter. I could throw them on with almost any outfit, and they're hands down the most comfortable flats I've ever worn. Plus, I can just toss them in the washing machine for a quick refresh whenever I need. And perhaps you have a goal this year to buy more sustainable products. Well, Rothy's has you covered, not only because they'll last a long time, but also because their shoes and accessories are made out of plastic water bottles. Rothy's truly prioritizes sustainability every step of the way. So check out all the amazing shoes, bags, and masks available right now at rothys.com slash newsworthy. That's rothys, R-O-T-H-Y-S, rothys.com slash newsworthy. Style and sustainability meet to create your new favorites. Head to rothys.com slash newsworthy today. Now back to some information about tax season. The IRS has already started accepting returns, and like every year, you have until April 15th to file. But this time around, it's going to be trickier for many Americans. For example, unemployment, working from home, and those direct relief payments from Congress all have an impact. So let's start with unemployment. Some people may not realize their jobless benefits are taxable. So if you collect unemployment, you can have taxes withheld from the start, but not everyone chooses that option. And some Americans who became unemployed for the first time this year might be surprised to get a big tax bill. Next, if you've been working away from home, like from a vacation house or your parents' house, you might be paying a lot more taxes than usual. That's because some states require you pay taxes even if you just work there a single day. So you could end up paying taxes in more than just your home state. Different states have different tax laws, though, so it all depends on where you worked. And finally, let's talk about those relief payments from the government that went out as part of the CARES Act. Good news is you do not have to pay taxes on that money. And if you qualified for a payment but never got one, or if you were underpaid, you can get your money through a tax credit this year. And that's your thing to know today. All right. Thank you so much for listening and for sharing the show. We'll be back tomorrow with much more news to know. Until then, have a great day.